my name is Dr. Bill Cardoso, and today we're going to talk about ways that X-ray inspection can improve profits when you are assembling uh, LEDs. The best way to address this point is to go over a case study, and uh, we're going to show today uh, a company we worked with to improve the quality of their LED assemblies. Uh, we're not going to go in details uh, who they are, but we're going to call them the Great Manufacturing Company, uh, GMC, which is a global company with facilities in U.S., Mexico, and China. They have a large-scale manufacturing uh, facility. They make PCBs, uh, including uh, BJs and QFNs, and their customers include medical device companies, uh, military and aerospace. Now, new management has pushed aggressively uh, to reduce, reduce cost, and unfortunately, their financial performance was declining at the time we engaged uh, with uh, GMC. So, they've been profitable for the past 20 years, uh, but have seen a steep decline in profits uh, when, coincidentally, a year after they started making LED Luminaire, um, they introduced actually uh, an LED Luminaire product line in the market. And... Uh, our analysis has shown that the warranty cost had uh, skyrocketed, uh, which means that um, product was being returned, uh, which then means that uh, the, uh, the assembly quality wasn't as uh, high as they had expected. So the question is, have cost savings cost the future of the company? And that's what we're going to address today. We're going to see what happened. So they make, uh, they're fairly new, GMC is fairly new to the uh, LED Luminaire market. Uh, they offer uh, two warranty options uh, to their customers. They have a 38,000 hour warranty that is free, including the price. They also have an extended 58,000 hour warranty that costs extra to the customer. Uh, a single LED failure here uh, results in a Luminaire fail. Uh, they have... Uh, the pricing model they use, um, you know, I, this is not exact, but for the for the sake of this exercise, uh, we're going to use a single luminaire cost $100, uh, and the price uh, of the 50,000 hour extended warranty is 20. Production distribution costs is around 35 bucks, which means that uh, leaves uh, five dollars for the warranty cost. Now. Quality is crucial uh, on your bottom line and it's crucial for your pricing model uh, because the, there's a expectation uh, with this uh, uh, $5 they left for warranty that uh, 5% uh, of the product shipped uh, will come back as, in, as, a, as a RMA. While um, uh, they budgeted up to 20% in returns within the extended warranty period. Now, uh, what we helped GMC understand is if the amount they have allocated uh, to the warranty cost was enough uh, and we had some preliminary ideas that it was definitely not enough. So uh, when they started, when they entered the LED market, uh, the LED luminaire market I should say, they were selling product at a very healthy product profit margin. But they saw those uh, margins erode uh, because of the uh, uh, um, returns. So let's go over the culprit here, the, the, the issue they were having, which is LED voiding. LED voiding is caused when uh, you assemble an LED onto a substrate. Okay, so this is a diagram showing the LED here on top, uh, substrate that can be uh, uh, organic material, ceramic, or whatever or the substrate that you use for thermal uh, management. And uh, in between, you also have the die attach, which is, um, in most cases, solder. The problem is when you attach the LED onto the substrate, uh, there are some gaps in that die attach. Uh, and those gaps uh, create, uh, um, impede, uh, they block the path, the heat conduction path, from the LED to the substrate. So the critical thing here is the junction a temperature or the temperature that the LED is going to be running. The higher the temperature, the shorter lifetime of the LED is going to be. So the more voids you have, the warmer the LED is going to run, the shorter the luminaire is going to last. Here are some, uh, some examples. Uh, the top left, you show a photograph of an LED. 
Here on the top right uh, is an x-ray showing those voids that, uh, that you saw before. You can see that uh, lighter area here is, um, it represents the voids and the darker area all around are the, uh, 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 the solder material. And here on the bottom left, uh, you can see the voiding marked in red and then the uh, bottom right, the rep uh, three-dimensional representation of this volume showing uh, X, Y, and then the density of the material. Then you can clearly see all the voiding uh, between the LED and uh, the substrate. Uh, if you slice the sample and take um, an image with a scanning electron microscope, uh, you can clearly see uh, the voiding. You see this darker area here is the voiding, while the brighter area uh, represents the solder connecting the LED to the substrate. So this is uh, this photo is very um, uh, a very good illustration how the thermal path between the substrate and the LED is obstructed by the voids, thus causing the LED to run harder. Now we took. Uh, X-ray images of a thousand LEDs, and within each one of those images, we calc we measured how much voiding uh, this um, the, the luminaires had, or the assembly had. And what you can see here in this uh, histogram uh, is that the horizontal axis you have the area of the die attached void, while on the vertical axis you have the number of LEDs within that had that uh, level of voiding. And it's pretty incredible that um, you know the average um, voiding in this population is about 50%. So 50% of the area is not going to be covered by a solder. So we were able to determine uh, that voiding did was the issue they were having, and that's why product was coming back because the LEDs were running too warm, and as a result. They were burning and, uh, um, and the LEDs were um, dying in the field. So the next step in this analysis is, so what, right? I mean, we did this, this uh, we find out uh, how much voiding they were having. Now, the question that you have to ask yourself is, okay, if voiding makes my LEDs run warmer and die earlier, how much voiding can I have to fit within my pricing model? And that's where we, we, uh, we uh, that's the next step we took to find out what is the maximum void that a GMC could afford. For the first step in this analysis is to understand the relationship between the uh, LED, the junction temperature, and the LED lifespan. And this is a relationship that depends uh, on the LED that you're using. Uh, this specific one that we're using, uh, the relationship is such that uh, at you know below 50 degrees Celsius, uh, we expected the lifespan of the LED is around 60,000 hours, uh, which then drops sharply uh, to less than 20,000 hours at 110 uh, degrees Celsius. Now the next question you have to ask yourself is what is the relationship between the void area and the LED junction temperature, right? And we ran uh, a different samples uh, with different voidings uh, to determine this, uh, this graph. And we were able to determine that uh, the voiding area greatly affects the junction temperature, especially in the 50% uh, and above, there's a, this exponential impact on the amount of, um, on, on the temperature of the LED as the void area increases. So based on those uh, two plots that I showed you before, the lifespan as a function of the uh, temperature and the temperature as a function of the void area, we we're able to determine the lifespan as a function of voiding. And we found a very interesting uh, relationship that out of the 1,000 samples that we inspected, 133 were expected to fail within the standard uh, warranty period, and 540, over 50%, were expected to fail within the extended period, uh, warranty period. And uh, keep in mind uh, that 13% is a much higher number than the 5% that GMC had budgeted, and 54% is much higher than the 20% that 
that GMC had priced in their uh, model. So it is clear that GMC had far underestimated uh, the uh, expected cost of the return product. The pricing model was deficient and also the quality program was highly deficient. So what we've done is uh, we've introduced an X-ray uh, inspection system uh, into the production line and determined that voiding or the void area is the key metric for quality control. Because no matter what you're doing, no matter how good you think your quality program is, if voiding is too high, you have too much voiding, your LEDs are going to die earlier, and as a result, product is going to come back. And your margins, margins, your profit margins are going to go. So here's one example of their, uh, one of the luminaires they make. Uh, and you can see uh, it's an array of um, um, a number of LEDs. And these are examples of the LEDs mounted on these boards and how much voiding they were experiencing. And again, remember, the brighter areas show the void and the dark areas are the solder. So you can clearly see that we're having soldering, uh, uh, you know, voiding areas well above 50% uh, in these examples. Now, after they introduced the X-ray inspection system to the quality program, Voiding got great, great, greatly reduced, as you can see here. So these are beautiful um, um, examples of uh, very low voiding in their uh, process. <clears throat> so a quick overview before the quality program with the X-ray inspection system was implemented. Uh, they were, uh, in this specific luminaire that we, uh, that we saw before, void, uh, voiding was around 40% and was dropped to 8% with a very tight standard deviation of 0.9 from the 15 that they had before. So that's a great, great improvement on their manufacturing process. And how did they get there? Uh, so we're using the X-ray machine as the key measuring metric for this, uh, for this uh, manufacturing process improvement. Uh, they were able to determine that the substrate surface cleanness wasn't appropriate. So they adopted a new program to clean uh, the, um, both uh, the boards and to clean uh, the LEDs before, um, before uh, placing them on the board. They've also uh, worked with the PCB board, you know, with the boards as a manufacturing company to improve the metallization of their boards. There was uh, some issues with uh, wetting solder onto the original metallization that they had on their, uh, on their boards. They also played with the reflow oven temperature profile. Uh, they've uh, determined that, it wasn't, that the temperature just wasn't staying warm long enough uh, to fully cure uh, their uh, solder. They also uh, had to change their paste, uh, solder paste selection. Uh, they also reviewed their dispensing procedures and how they stored this other paste. And finally, uh, they greatly improved their LED substrate handling and storage. Uh, they're just, they weren't, uh, substrates were arriving, being left on the table overnight uh, without the proper handling, and uh, which created oxidation, which then created improper uh, solder profiles. So, X-ray inspection systems, uh, in this case, uh, you were able to hopefully determine the three main uh, areas where X-ray inspection systems are used in manufacturing. First is to design a process. So you have a manufacturing process uh, that you don't really know if it's working well or not. So you put an X-ray inspection system in the loop to verify that the design, the process design that you are, um, that you're designing at the point is, is going correctly. Uh, the second uh, stage is to do uh, process verification. So as the process is going, use the X-ray to make sure that your metrics are within your tolerances. And the third critical aspect of having an X-ray inspection system is for uh, inspection of parts that come from the field so you can understand how they failed and why they failed. Voiding area, in our experience, has been 
a critical key metric to determine process variation. So if you know how much voiding you can afford, and if you keep track of how much voiding you're shipping, or what is the voiding of the boards that you're shipping, then you're going to have a very successful LED luminaire operation. And you have to, uh, and, and another critical aspect of a successful uh, LED manufacturing operation is to make sure that you set a quality plan that continuously measures how much void uh, each one of the LEDs has. And again, to make sure that those numbers don't stray away from the tolerances that you can afford. We hope that this uh, uh, presentation was um, um, productive. And if you'd like more information, please feel free to contact us at any time. Uh, you can call us at 760-752-1192. Uh, uh, and you can always reach us at creativeelectron.com. Thanks for listening.